on August 28, 2021. Hideo Kojima tweeted out that you can learn photography using video games. Shortly thereafter, media outlets picked up on this and started spreading the word that you can learn photography using video games. And you know what I think, Kojima? I agree with you. So welcome to Photo Mode Perspective, where we look at photo modes in different video games but through the eyes of a photographer. My name is Mir, and let's go ahead and get started. First things first, go into your options and go into game settings and go all the way to the bottom and make sure you have launch photo mode with controller on. And if you want to temporarily save the settings for the photo mode, you can go ahead and turn that on as well. To access the photo mode, go ahead and press the left side of the touchpad. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to skip all the poses and the expression and focus primarily on the technical aspects of this photo mode. So on the camera tab, you have your focal length, which is actually marked by millimeters. This is exactly what you'll see in actual lenses. Now, if you head to the left with the millimeter getting smaller, this right here is your wide angle. And if you move over to the right where your millimeter gets higher, this is your telephoto. Now with wide angle and telephoto, there's two things you should be aware of. Your wide angle distortion and your telephoto compression. Let me explain. So as you see here, Sam is your subject and the mountains in the back is your background. And wide angle distortion comes into play when it's separated. It shows that they're being pulled apart. Now if we move back, which you should when you're using a telephoto, and start going into the telephoto range, now take a look. This is your telephoto compression. Sam is your subject, the mountains are your background, but now they look like they're compressed. They are right next to each other. Now, if you wanna know which focal length to use in which situation, uh, try doing this with a wide angle. Keep that for the environment. Try to avoid taking pictures of someone with a wide angle as it's gonna look a little unflattering. Now, if you're trying to take a picture of someone, lean more towards telephoto. It tends to be a lot more flattering. And on top of that, you can pull in the background closer, use that telephoto compression, and make it a very nice and pleasing image. Now, if you push R3, this will bring up this grid. This grid is known as the rule of thirds. It's not a definite rule. You're allowed to break it, but basically it'll help you guide and compose your shot. Let's move on to depth of field. If we turn on the depth of field, you'll see that it'll blur out the background. This blur is known as bokeh. Now, if the autofocus is on, Sam will always be in focus, but if you turn it off, now you can adjust exactly what you want to be in focus. The aperture is marked by f-stops, which is actually something you'll see on real lenses. And the easiest way to remember is the smaller the f-stop number, the blurrier the background is gonna get. And of course, the higher the f-stop number, the more is in focus. Something else you should know about aperture is that when changing your f-stop, it'll also change your exposure. So if your aperture is at, let's say, f2, more light is going into the lens. But if it's at f22, less light is going in. So it doesn't show it in the game, but that's something to keep in mind when you're using an actual camera. Let's move on to the brightness and filter tab. Here you have your exposure, which really is just the brightness of your image. You can adjust your contrast. So if you go higher with your contrast, it'll give it more of a punchier look. And if you go the opposite direction, it'll give it more of a faded look. And of course, it wouldn't be a proper photo mode if you couldn't change filters. And then if you wanted to, you can actually adjust how strong or weak you want the filter to be. You could also add some noise to your image. So if you really wanted to go for some, some grain, some noise, you can do that as well. Next, let's talk about lens effects. First, you have your vignette. And a vignette is essentially an oval that goes around your screen and it darkens up the edges and the sides. This is more of a personal preference, but you could also use it to highlight what's in the center of the image. And then of course, you can change the strength of your vignette. Your lens distortion, you can basically use this to cause more of a fisheye look if you wanted to. Kind of like a GoPro look or some sort of action camera. You can use your uh, lens distortion that way. 
or if you think that the telephoto compression or the wide angle distortion is a little too much, you can come over here to the lens distortion and adjust it so the image looks a little bit more right to you. So the chromatic aberration on a real lens is basically a failure of a lens to focus all colors to the same point. That's essentially what it is. Most of the time you don't want this effect in your image, but if you wanted to go for more of a uh, artistic effect, you can go ahead and adjust it to your liking. You can also frame your image if you'd like, and then add a logo. What's nice about the logo is that you can not only change the color of it, but you can actually position it where you want it, as opposed to other games where they just have it in a set location. One thing I did notice is that if you're playing this in widescreen mode and use the cinema frame, it just crops the image uh, pretty far in. So just something to keep in mind. So Kojima says that you can learn photography using video games and he made sure you could do that with his own game, Death Stranding. Hopefully you learned something new today and I'll uh, see you guys next time.